Okay, without any delay, we want to just get into the word of the Lord quickly. And it's just a continuation of our series that we've been doing all of these weeks. <clears throat> the benefits of a spiritual mind. But I've got a big question for you today. And I guess when we start asking questions and we start getting answers, we become intelligent. Okay, we have knowledge. So the question that I'm going to ask you this morning is, what is the opposite of fear? Mm -mm. <clears throat> Before you start thinking spiritually, if you answer from a secular mindset, okay, if you want to be correct as far as the English language goes, so if you're going to ask a secular-minded person, what is the opposite of fear? Okay, they will tell you fearlessness. Or they might tell you being unafraid. Okay, or they might even tell you being brave. Because that is the, those, that is the secular understanding. Now I'm glad that you're thinking spiritually. But you know, some things we've got to go back, take a step back. So that we can get a big, bigger picture. So when we ask ourselves the question, what is the opposite of fear? You know, with a circular mind. So we can get answers. We can say fearlessness. We can say bravery. You know, we can say being unafraid. So let's ask another question. What is dominant in the world right now, even as you're sitting in this room? What has been dominating the world even last year, the whole year? What has been dominating the world since November 2019? Fear. So right now, fear is a dominant factor in most parts of the world. Now, in order to overcome fear as a dominant factor in society, something must start inside the lives of individuals like you and I are you listening something must start on the inside something must happen on the inside of an individual you know what the biggest shame of all is that when spiritually minded okay supposedly spiritually minded people people that belong to the Lord Jesus Christ when we start to operate with a secular mindset it could be very dangerous because then we fall into the same category as the people in the world. We fall in the same category, category as them. Then we start to behave just like them. Then we start to be dependent on, on, secular, on the secular world. We just start to be dependent on the governments and on the health uh, uh, professionals and professors and all of these things that are happening out there. And I'm not saying to you that those things are evil. But I must remind you, as a child of God, that benefits for us as children of God does not come from there. Alright, so, when you go into a scripture, can we, can we go to the scripture right now in 1 Timothy 1.7? When you go to scripture, you find something important. Alright? And listen to what the scripture is saying. Are you in the right place? Let me just quote that scripture to you. God has not given us a spirit of fear. Are you listening? That's what the scripture is saying. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Now we put ourselves under the limelight now. Why? Because we are believers in Jesus Christ. We cannot become the victims the world has become. Are you listening? Spiritually speaking, we are head and shoulder above Him. Why? It's because we have advantage. We have a thing called unfair advantage. Because there is someone 
in our lives has already defeated the enemy. Are you listening? So we are not victims to that enemy anymore. So God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given us the spirit of power. Are you listening? So I'm just trying to dissect that verse of scripture for you so that you would understand. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given us a spirit of power. The word power here means authority. And when the child of God refuses to use the authority that they have received in the name of Jesus Christ, then they will become victims just like the rest of them. You know, <clears throat> sometimes we behave as if Jesus did nothing for us. Because we are so dependent on the arms of flesh. We are so dependent on the systems of this world. And we behave as children of God. We behave as if he has done nothing for us. But everything that, is, that was needed to be done has already been done. Remember the last word that he gave before ascending from the Mount of Olives? He said, all authority has been given unto me in heaven and on earth. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians as well, that God has put all things under him and made him the head of everything. Are you listening to me? You as a child of God, you got no room for fear in your life. If so, if you, if you have fear, you must understand that fear is a spirit. Are you listening? You know, being afraid of something and having fear, they are two different things. Like when a really uh, uh, vicious dog Hangry dog is chasing you, you become afraid. That's not the spirit of fear. That's just being afraid in that circumstances. But the spirit of fear is a spirit that enters the people, enters the minds of people and starts to govern them from that stronghold of their mind and rule their lives with fear. But God has not given us a spirit of fear. But he's given us a spirit of power. That means he's given us the spirit of authority. So we must take authority over every works of the enemy and especially the demon of fear. We must take, you've got to have to take authority. You can't sit back and wait for something to happen. And you know, people cry out to God often. And every day Christians are crying out to God, God heal me, God heal me. But from heaven he's answering, I already did so. I already did so. By my wounds, you were healed. Yeah, but I'm still sick. Whose fault is that? Your fault. Because you now need to move from that place of fear into faith. Yes, for the spiritually minded person, the opposite of fear is faith. Are you listening? So when fear is present, faith is not. But when faith is present, Fear is not. So, because we are limited the time, we're going to really go a little faster with this. 1 Timothy 6.12 Fight the good fight of faith. Don't fall down and play dead. And play some games. Fight, fight the good fight of faith. How do you fight? How do, you know when someone, when something happens to somebody, when they sit and cry about it, does that mean they're fighting? If something happens to someone, they go into the mode of depression. Are they fighting? If something happens in someone's lives and they go into demonic oppression, are they fighting? Can you see the picture right now? How do you fight? Fall down and play dead and thinking the devil is going to ignore you? No. You get up. You get up and you start to fight. The world doesn't know this, church. They don't know this. But you know this. And you have to make this active in your life. You've got to make your feet active. And you've got to fight the good fight of faith. 
You have to. How do you do that? You stand up. You take your ground. You don't move. And you stand steadfast. And you start declaring and proclaiming the word of the, of the Lord. And you pray it out. And you pray loudly if you need to. You know, there were so many deaths because of COVID-19 all over the world. Even in our own country. Even in our own community. And somebody asked me a question. Why are so many pastors dying? What is your answer? Can I ask you that question this morning? Can you answer that question? What is my answer? They gave up fighting. They gave up fighting. Let me remind you that this COVID-19 is not a virus. It's a demon. Please, it's not a normal virus like, like the flu and the other things. This is a demon. And this COVID demon is targeting Christian homes and leaders. I don't have to tell you much. Go home and do your own research and you'll find out that this is a demon. You know I saw this demon? I saw it. I spent so much of time, I went to sleep like maybe about 2 o'clock that morning. But as soon as I put my head on the pillow, that demon entered my room. Standing upright like a man. I'm not going to give you the full description. Okay, it might be offensive to people in the other, other parts of the world. But it was standing upright. In the form of an animal, but it was standing upright. And, and God showed me, the Holy Spirit shows me how it enters. Like how a demon enters people's body. That thing enters people's body. But I must also say this to you. There are other people got infected by that demon, but recovered. So what is, what is the difference between the people that have died and the ones that have recovered? Go and do your research, you'll find out. The difference is the ones that recovered, they fought the good fight of faith. Go and find out. They didn't take this lying down. When the enemy entered their house, they served notice to him to leave. Are you listening? He came in and he tried to dominate. He tried to rule. But finally, when the Spirit of God came upon them, and when they started to remember the scriptures and the promises of God word, God's word, and when they started to pray, there's a friend of mine that was in hospital, a pastor friend, and I had a long discussion with him on the phone. And he also saw the demon in the ward, in the ICU. And he's telling me, you're right. This thing is not a normal sickness. This is a demon. And he had a face-to-face -face conversation with the devil. So I'm, I'm bringing this warning out to you. Because the enemy cannot control your life unless it brings fear into your mind. When you do not allow the fear in, he cannot control you. So don't behave like the secular world is doing. Because you are not secular, you are spiritual. Say this after me, I am spiritual. I am a spiritual being. The word of God is alive in me. I have faith. I have no fear. So there are testimonies of people that have recovered. This friend of mine was on the deathbed. The doctor called his family and told him he's going to die any moment. But even in his state, he was praying in tongues. And in four days later, he recovered. And the same doctor who pronounced death over his life was now surprised that he recovered. Okay, we have Rajan here this morning. And he too was inflicted by this demon. And he fought the good fight of faith in his room. And I told him that the only reason why you rose up from that is because you started to pray. You realized that this was the enemy attack. We have Lyndon here right now. He too was inflicted. Just two of them was inflicted by that. But we also have Janice here. <laughs> we also have O'Shea here. Hmm? I think Lyle is at work. But listen to what happened in this family. I'm going to share this with you. Lyndon picked it up because Lyndon meets with like about, uh, I don't know, hundreds, hundreds of people a day. You know, he works in the licensing bureau. So he's meeting different kinds of people every day. So somehow, you know, he got in infected by this demon. But he came home and, you know, his wife never left his side. She slept on the same bed with him. And she declared that this demon will not enter me. Amen. And he didn't. Amen. 
this demon will not enter my children. And he didn't. Amen. And Lyndon fully recovered. Amen. So what is, my, what is that example for? To show you that when you take authority over this demon, it will flee. The Bible says that. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So no sickness and no disease can enter your body or come into your home if you set the boundaries by the authority of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So no fear, church. No fear. Don't, you know, the problem is, is social media. The problem is the television news and those cell phones. Everything happens everywhere. Please do yourself a favor. Stop reading them. Stop listening to those videos and some of them digging up some of those old things that has happened and sending it on social media and fear is gripping the hearts of people. Those are old events that took place. But because you are ignorant of it, you think it's happening right now. Let me remind you, the COVID demon is out of this country. Okay, the government of this country don't want to let it go because it's money for them. But you know what? The church in South Africa has taken authority over this demon. This demon is on his way out. Are you listening? They are now announcing a third wave. There is no third wave. Yes. Amen. Are you listening to me? I cancel the words of those yes. prophecies or whoever they think they are. Yes. I cancel the words in the holy name of yes. Jesus. Amen. And all of those you, of, of you that are listening to this message on social media, you join us today in faith. And you declare this over your household. You declare this over your spouse. You declare this over your children. You declare this over your workplace. That this demon shall not come anywhere near you. We're going to look at one example quickly taken from the book of Mark chapter 5. Can we go there quickly? This man, he was the ruler of the synagogue. His name was Jairus. His, do his daughter was seriously sick to the point of death. The first thing that occurred to this man, I must go and find Jesus. All right? So he went looking and he found Jesus. And he went, the Bible says that he went and bowed before the Lord and told him, Lord, my daughter is absolutely sick. She's at a point of death. You know what? If you come and lay your hands on her, she'll be well. She'll live. So Jesus went with him, the Bible says. You know, but on the road he met this other lady. You remember we spoke about her? The woman with the issue of blood? And while, while this lady got healed and there was a big a little dialogue between him and this lady, some people came from Jairus' house to look for Jairus. And this is what they said. While, while he, Jesus, was still speaking to who? To that, to that lady that just got healed. While he was still speaking to her, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house, Jairus' house, who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? That's a sad state of affair. Because that's how Christians behave as well. Oh, it's finished now. There's nothing we can do about it. Right? Now you have a choice. Jairus had a choice here. To listen to that word. Let's go to the next verse. Or listen to this word. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only believe. So what's your choice? Jairus, are you going to hear the words of these people that came from your house and told you that your daughter is now dead? Or are you going to hear my word? Do not be afraid. You see, see church, you see the spirit of fear? That spirit of fear goes before every bad thing that happens. That fear enters the heart of people. Now, what did Jesus say? Oh, don't be sad. Don't be sorrowful, uh, Jairus, your daughter is in a better place. Hmm? What did he say? Do not be afraid. Only believe. Every one of us in this life have that choice. We can make a decision. Whether we'll go by what the world is saying, what the minister of health is saying, what the president is saying, what all of the prophecies are saying, what the world news is saying. We can go by what they're saying or we can go by what Jesus is saying. Do not be afraid. Only believe. And what was the result of that? 
Jairus believed Jesus. He believed the Lord. And he wasn't afraid. When they were done in that meeting, they walked up to Jairus' house. Okay? They walked up to his house. And the people were crying. All the sympathizers. Don't worry, she's in a better place now. You know, Jairus, no more sickness, no more sorrow. Jairus says, just get out of our way. I'm bringing the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords with me. I'm bringing the life giver with me. So when Jesus went there, he threw all of them out of the house. They got angry with him. What did he say to them? The girl is not dead. She's just asleep. You see, to the secular mind, that's a joke. Why? Because they start laughing at him. Are you listening? To the secular mind, that's a joke. But to the spiritual mind, she is not dead. She's just asleep. But they laughed at him. Imagine that. You know, I laughed as well when, uh, when I researched the story years ago. I said, Lord, these people just cried now, but now they're laughing. Same group of people that was crying, the girl died. Now they're laughing at you. I wonder who's the joke there. Definitely not Jesus. He said the child is not dead. She's just asleep. So they laughed at him, they mocked him, but they left the house. So he took Peter, James and John with him and he entered the house of Jairus. Goes to this child, calls her and said, Arise. And she got up. Now you know, every child of God have that privilege of having the power of God manifest in your life and in your home. There is nothing, there is no circumstances and in any situation that you will not be victorious. Don't be afraid. Only believe. Only believe. In other words, stay with the first thought on your mind, Jairus. When you came looking for me, you knew in your heart that if I come and lay my hands on your daughter, she will live. Stay with that. Stay with that thought, Jairus. Keep that thought on your mind because that is about to happen. And that's exactly what took place. So wherever you go, listen to me, children of God. Wherever you go, don't go with fear. I'm not saying for you not to stick to the regulations. This is a law right now in this country. Okay, you've got to sanitize and got to use mask. That's a law. So I'm not asking you to break any laws. But what I'm asking you today as a leader here in the kingdom of God, don't be afraid. Don't act as if you're a secular person. That you go by what the world is saying. You go by the social media. You go by what is on YouTube. You go by what the world news is saying. No, no, no. You go by what the word is saying. So you set the boundaries to your household. And you tell that demon never enter your house. Doesn't matter where you go or you meet what you do. That enemy cannot follow you back home. You know why? You have the power to dictate. And cancel the work of that devil. Don't be afraid. So what is the opposite of fear? Faith for us. Stand strong. Fight the good fight of faith. You know... Just discipline your life of prayer, church. And that will help you so much to fight the good fight of faith. You know, if you don't have time, make time. Make time. There's no such thing that you shouldn't have time. Go one hour later to bed. You know, go, go a couple of hours later to bed like I do. And just go and pray. Let the Holy Spirit minister to you. Read the word of God so that you can get into a time of warfare, even if you needs be, before going to bed at night. Don't be lazy when it comes to your prayer life. Don't put anything be else before that. Because that is where the power of God manifests in your life. That is why God, that is why the scripture says, God has not given you a spirit of fear. Spirit of fear comes from the devil, but he's given you a spirit of power. A spirit of love, and he's given you a sound mind. Are you listening to the rest of the world? The, the spiritual mind sounds crazy. So when Jesus said to them, the girl, girl is not dead, they laughed at him. But imagine their faces now when the girl woke up and the mother gave her food to eat. And the next you know, minute they see the child walking out of the house. Imagine now 
The jokers on who? On the secular minded people. You know what? They scream so loudly. They put such a show. And they got to act as if they know what is happening. But you know what? We know what is happening. Come and stand with me. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray together. Now, if you are threatened in any way, in any part of your life, whether it is finances, whether it is someone in your family that is unwell, whether it is your parents, or if there's anything you know that is like a loophole for the enemy to come and, and bog you down, I want you to bring that before God right now because this is where faith is right now. You just heard the word and the word of God produces faith and faith is inside of you. Okay, so once you take your offerings and whatever you have brought to bring before the Lord, take it in your hands because you know after we pray, we're going to sow this. We're going to sow this seed. And we thank God for faith. We thank God for His Word. We thank God for authority that we have. We thank God for boldness. We thank God for the privilege we have as children of Almighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. If there's anyone, I want you to bring them to God right now. If there's any incident in your life that you need to bring before God. If you know of someone that is unwell or some situation or there's a situation at work, or you, you, you're looking for promotion or whatever. Come on, church. Come on. This is the moment. Bring it up before God. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for victory. Thank you for victory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God of wonder. Our hearts are yours. Thank you for wonders. Thank you for miraculous. Thank you for the supernatural. Thank you for faith, oh God. My God, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Can you sense the atmosphere of, atmosphere of faith in this room, church? Can you sense the atmosphere of faith is rising right now? Come on, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Quench every dart of the enemy. Cancel every prayer right now. Every fire, strange fire rather. And every arrow of the enemy. Every fiery dart. Come on. Be bold. Be courageous right now. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord. Jesus for the supernatural. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My God. Mm, there's tremendous faith in your heart. Come on, come on. Come on, God's a rewarder. Yes, He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Your faith is seeking Him right now. My God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are victorious. My God and my strength. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. My Father, thank you. Tira da bando sogoro mari basi. My God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, 
Holy God, Holy God, Holy God. Mashima Bokul Mabari Dasa, Tenuru Bokul Abasa. In Sebri Menzo Kona Mabasha and Arabati. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Raise your hands with me. Come on, make a declaration. Say, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for the power of your broken body. I thank you for the power of your shed blood. I thank you for the power of your resurrection that is in my life, that is manifest in my spirit, in my soul, and in my body. I live for your glory. I live in the promise of your word. For I am the light and I am the salt of the earth in the holy name of Jesus. And I thank you for the harvest of my righteousness in my life today in the holy name of Jesus. And even as I sow the seed, I receive the others in the name of Jesus. And as I partake of this covenant meal, I thank you for the manifestation of your power in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah.